next to God, tonight we are going to discuss the woman. A very fortunate and unfortunate subject, which is the core of any unfortunate experience a man can ever have, and which is a source of bliss that man can enjoy. I will try to relate to the basic scriptures and explain to you how it works in your life. And if you have decency to understand it and its basic needs, which may demand a change in your life, then perhaps it can help you. Can you put the volume a little higher? I think it is a normal procedure that it should be tested before you can do these insecure tantrums. <coughs> One little machine cannot be handled, how can the machine of the whole life can be handled by you? Now if you want to really know the depth of this word woman, it is actually a vow man. Every man enjoys his ecstasy into his opposite polarity and therefore woman is the opposite polarity of the man and in the state of ecstasy he addresses her as woman. When I'm going to talk to you, you might have some misunderstanding. I know the woman has been exploited, she's a sex symbol, she's just a mother to nurse children and she is divorced and she is this and she is that. I'm not trying to relate to the side of the exploitation and negation through which a woman has gone and I'm also not siding with the woman in the sense that she divorces the man for sake of money, she sells her body for the sake of money, she does not have any morality, ethics, and she does not know that she being a mother can go up to the grave with the all misfortune which will cause through by anything, commitment, and once she commit her body, that's the highest bit she can go through and she cannot stop herself. So neither I am favoring the man tonight nor the woman, but I'm going to give to the, go to the classic, ideal woman and I'm explaining what a woman is in her all four dimensions and what she should be. So uh, don't uh, misunderstand in one thing, just judge it by your own knowledge and your own meditation, how you feel about it. If you spell the word woman, you know, in the beginning there was a word, word was with God, word is God. You will write how? W-U-O man. So W-U-O man, O man, double of you is woman. So basically, no, is it, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> so, the problem is, hardly there is yet any man who is not born out of woman. So, we cannot relate to woman in any other form but something very near and dear to us. 
in a relationship as a mother, in a relationship as a wife, in a relationship as a partner, polarity, in every walk of life, if you sit down and analyze your life, without woman you do not exist. You cannot exist. Uh, I hear, I want to cover this subject, those, those celibates who talked against women and they thought woman is no good, woman is this. That crazy period came in spiritual life of those spiritual cowards who couldn't handle women. So they laid down as a rule, they ran away, they said it is easy to handle God than to handle a woman. So I think you will not give very much importance to that stuff. In history of Guru Nanak, Mashtinder Nath talked to him that you have such a powerful spirit and light around you, but you are married. How can that be? So Guru Nanak asked him, first time he used a hard word, Audu, a man with a donkey consciousness. Such a great Guru, Mithindranath was known as the highest yogi who could visualize God and all that. And then Guru Nanak called him Audu. He said, Audu, O donkey conscious man, you are slandering your mother, which is a woman. You are born out of woman and you are talking against woman. What has gone wrong with your union with God? What has gone wrong with you? So that was a very typical time when this messenger of God took a very extreme positive step to make realize the man how important in one's life a woman is. And it is very important. There's no fulfillment without it. And a woman in your home can suck you out in three minutes and she can inspire you to be divine in two minutes. So what kind of woman we are seeking? Who should look beautiful, her face should be beautiful, she has more inheritance money, or she is educated, she can support herself, or she is dumb and very slave type and all that stuff. Everybody has different ideas. In scriptures, woman has been divided into four dimensions, four sections. First is Hansini. Our swan is the symbol. Second is the mirgni, the deer is the symbol. Third is the shutarni, horse is the symbol. Fourth is the hathni, elephant is the symbol. They have divided very minutely after a huge study of civilization, woman, civilization into four parts. Now about this swan as a woman, she is clean, clear, beautiful, knows what is right and wrong, unpolluted, white, swans are white, and she swims in the ocean of life without wetting her feathers. Most beautiful person, the very glance of her adds inspiration, very sincere, perfect, in every way known and unknown to the man. So much so scripture says, what to talk of marrying her, if a man only passes in her company for a few minutes, his total consciousness changes. That much is the effect of this woman. She is positive and in her company. Doesn't matter what relationship you have towards her, in her company the man should immediately become positive. Scripture goes to the extent that if a man is totally miserably negative, the word is very miserably, hopelessly negative, and if he happens to be fall in the company of a woman who is of this category, 
with few words and conversation, he will feel back his manhood and his personality. She is so inspiring and so delightful. So now you will be asking me where that woman is. Well, that woman is here still. Woman is a woman always. Sometimes we do not look to her because our eyes are blind because of certain lustful sesh, lustful, sensational, exploitary visions. We do not look in women. I have found very few men in my study who look at a woman as an object of grace, <coughs> symbolically. When we look at a woman, we look how we can grab her, how we can possess her, how we can eat her away, and how we can exploit her and blah, blah, blah. It is such a terrible thing in our consciousness as men, you can't believe me, but when you go and sit back in your living room and you're going to sleep tonight in the bedroom, my words will hit you back. That's what you all do. I am a man myself, don't think I am too pro-woman, but I am telling you, that's what we think. Moment you see a beautiful man, that should immediately make you appreciate God or God, Lord, what a beauty you have created on this earth. No, that's not the attitude. You immediately want to, hey, she becomes my friend, God, that's best. All that stuff. It is the same tendency of that child who sees a beautiful rose plant and then he sees a beautiful rose, all he wants to is pluck it. He doesn't want to appreciate it. To pluck it, smell it, and then rub it, spoil it, and throw it on the ground. That tendency of that child and that of a man who sees the beauty in the woman, Scripture says, if one wants to see the total creativity of the universe in beauty, he can see in the face of a Hansini. This category of woman is so representative of God and beauty that in her face, in the glow of her face, the whole genius of God creativity can be felt or realized. Well, the second comes Mirgni, the symbol is deer. You know these little deers in the nature, they run around and they add beauty to it. They are vegetarian, they do not bother anybody. They jump around full of energy, full of nature. They, they make you feel something light and higher. That is a very creative symbol. If you can relate to in wilderness, when you find a deer running around, you find a very soothingness, very natural effect towards the creative energy of the Divine and God. Such woman, scripture says, are helpful, inspiring, energetic, and highly innocent. They are very innocent very innocent. And you know the total divinity is the sum up, sum up of total divinity is the innocence of the man. So they are very innocent people, very inspiring, very beautiful, almost far out. Then you go further in this category to the third category of the woman, the symbol is harsh. When they are wild, they are very, very wild. But when they are tamed, they are best friends. They take away all your load, make you feel Lord, makes your journey very light, very safe. They really work for you. You end up getting credit, they end up getting work for you. But when they are wild, they are very wild and you have to little hassle and sweat to get to them. And they do not trust you in the beginning. Once they 
becomes your pet, where you go on loading anything, they don't care, they feel this is their fulfillment. Last comes the woman, the Hathini elephant, the wisest animal, animal among the animal kingdom is elephant. Elephant goes by his own trails, does not adapt any normal path, eats all the time, does his own thing. Only wants the mate when he wants, she wants to mate, have the baby, then totally divert her attention into the baby and throw away all the males out of the herd. You know, elephants, they don't like the males in the herd when they are not on the mating season at all. The male has to run around separately. So such women are, first of all, they have all the attention just to get out of the man, the sperm, the moment the child is born, they put all attention to the child, the male may go anywhere, they don't care. That is a basic attitude in which she goes. And in this situation, the man deals and wheels his life. Hathani is a woman who is very self-centered, almost neurotic to her own needs. What she wants, she wants right now <coughs> and wants all the attention to be focused at her because she is not that beautiful like first three categories who by nature and grace are beautiful. Therefore she is aware of that weakness and she will try to draw all attentions. So these are the four categories available in the scriptures which men through all from the cave age up to this time have found out. Now question is, what is our modern woman? That's most important. Our more modern woman is a woman who wants to be a man, totally insecure and totally afraid to be exploited at every, every moment. That is our modern woman. And what is our modern man? He looks at a woman as an equal physical partner and deals with her just as a business deal. Honey, I kiss you, therefore you should kiss me. I gave you ten dollars, they should you cook my food, blah, blah, blah. He does not know that she is the polarity in which he can find satisfaction. And woman in her own mood, unfortunate it is that she through any surgical operation, very hard for every woman to become a male, almost is impossible. But in her wish, she is trying her level best to be as ugly as man is. She does not know that every man has to shave in the morning to keep his cheeks little soft and look like her, where she is naturally granted this perfect beauty. And she can create another man in union with the man, whereas man has no capacity by himself. And looking at the relationship of male and female, you have very deeply to understand. Your whole life, in spite of the marriage and divorce, in spite of the fact of like and dislike, in spite of the fact you are positively and negatively, somehow, Every life of the male will end up in a woman and every life of a woman will end up in a man. Because this is how it works. Opposite polarities must find a neutral. So every woman must find a male and every male must find a female in polarity. Now question is, if that is a must and we have to find that, why there is a divorce? Divorce happens in two cases, where man is immature and he is like a baby, he is afraid to take the responsibility of the partnership, that's one. And second is, when a woman duly married to a man, 
wants to be a mother, mother control. These are the two basic structural things in the human behavior which brings a divorce. Insecurity on the part of any partner towards the relationship and second, the pattern of the mother instinct in the man, in the woman. Woman has a most powerful instinct in her, that's the mother. And sometimes she gets so much crazy that she forgets the guy she's dealing with is a man she's married to and he's not a baby. So she starts babying him and that messes up the whole thing. Lastly, there is another problem and that is the inborns. Sometime the couple lays the total security of their total existence, which should be total understanding between the two, and use these poor newborns as the ground of security, which is a human tragedy. Now question is, male and female relation is a necessity for any expansion of the man. But the misfortune part of it, if the behavior is not totally understood and totally recognized and the foundation work is not done properly, anything else in human life is just useless game. It is so important. What is a yoga? When the finite polarity finds the merger with the infinity in polarity, the neutral stage of bliss or anand is yoga. And what is bhog? When an individual polarity finds a neutrality in opposite polarity of the male and a stage of neutral is neutrality is reached, which is a state of bliss, they call it also bhoga, and there also divinity or the supreme consciousness is achieved. So it is not, uh, I believe sincerely, you may not agree with me and I'm not telling you to agree with me at all, I believe a good God conscious woman can turn a great evil person to be divine. I definitely believe it and I know it as a miracle. But I also believe a insecure, nagging wife can make a great saintly man to look like an idiot. I also believe in that. So God save the king, king is dead. God save the woman, woman is divine. And if she is not, then better forget about it. There's hardly any chance. So I have explained to you the four forms of the woman, her nature, her faculties, her polarities, the relationship which we go through, as well as the inborn and how we deal with it. Now question arises, how can we find a solution in our life where we can find happiness in our relationship with the male and the female. That is what my subject is tonight and I'm going to work on that. I do not care how far we can achieve it, but I know we all can achieve it. Therefore, I will give you about five, six minutes or 10 minutes of rest if you want, 15 minutes up to 9 o'clock. You can talk about it and chew about it. Don't gallop it what I have said. I have said very heavy things. You, you may not even relate to the, what I'm talking about. 
but woman has a relationship with elephant why these are simple as in zodiac sign we have certain symbols to relate to certain characteristic that is what the ancient in their wisdom has done to us they are very useful things and when you are a psychologist or a sociologist and you want to live in this society and know the patterns of the individual towards the society and society's effects on the individual you got to know these fundamental ancient thoughts and you can reject them and accept them at your own convenience of accepting and rejecting then after 15 minutes i like to do a meditation today with you which is a part of the white tantric yoga but i'll not do it as a class of the tantric i'll do it just as a kriya because you will sit with that in closed eyes though i am present but i'll not like sometime out of your madness you may start sitting with any partner put eyes into eyes and have a weird experience sometime you must understand sometime you have misunderstanding the tantric yoga is a science of sex that's not true unfortunately tantric yoga is a science of total divine and self when it is a white tantric when you want to just accelerate yourself into energy then it's a red tantric where the rituals like blood and all that is used which we do not use at all and neither we know and none we care to know about that that's the red tantric and the black tantric which is one of the most weird thing ever the demon man in known and they found it out is to cast spell for personal exploitation and hypnotism that is black tantric unfortunately it is the power of the white tantric to cut off all the spells they don't work any person ever in life if he has done any kriya of a white tantric yoga red tantric spells and black tantric yoga spell cannot work on that man this is the one fundamental guarantee that is why when i found the men are very happy and women are very sometime very very insecure and the understanding is very remote among the people and but you know people are very sincere in this country that is the tragedy they are seeking they want happiness they want to know the technical know they want to be beautiful but there is a big but but at their terms so that that is a kind of a thing which we thought is not workable <coughs> we started giving these tantra yoga courses and we have found tremendous success tremendous success patterns of life change understood they understood the very basic of male and female relationship and we have we have so many beautiful things to remember so much so if you take the issue of the beads tooth on this summer sasas and you read those hundreds of positive moments which people have said while doing that tantra course they are eye opener they are eye opener and they are i think the best document which on on such a study can ever be produced so don't misunderstand man does need technical know how to inspire himself to the total understanding of a stage of neutral bliss where man can thoroughly understand the woman and a woman can understand the man by living a life of insecurity by living a life of greed and grab no woman can reach to a man and by living a life of exploitation and selfishness no man can ever enjoy the bliss in a woman it is very essential for us to start living clean and clear so that on this earth we can experience heavens and we not have to die and go to heaven to see the ice cold rishis sitting with lion cloth and churning their beads that is a far out imagination when you go in heaven you will be just sitting on on your own refrigerator would not like it and neither you learn to sit and meditate on your stove that is the hell so my dear tonight 
I would like you to understand one thing. Let us not go to hell and heaven. Let us create the very beauty and heaven here through our own experience of contentment, joy and happiness. In my life, you have the right to ask me a personal experience. That is how it works. I have never slaved myself to any situation, but I have been a disrespectful man to any woman. And I think if you all can ever find such a state of consciousness, you all will be very happy. I want to make a commentary on that. <laughs> Don't misunderstand. The women have not made me miserable. They have tried their best. And also don't misunderstand me that women have not helped me. I have lived in a state of situations where many times my life is dedicated to those great women who really sacrificed and suffered to see that I am protected and I am alive. And also my life and my this education and my neutralism is dedicated to those women who did every demon act to see that I do not exist in physical. So I had a, quite a pretty experience about it. And especially when I came to Canada in Toronto and I came in the early years in, in the United States of America, I had a very rough experience and very hard time. It is greatness of those yogi hunting women who wanted to lay numbers on all the yogis and they had a long list. They wanted to include me also in that, that I end up in my consciousness to build a huge, powerful power today. We call it Grace of God Movement of Women of America. We have decided to give back the woman her grace and it is first time in the history of United States of America that woman organized herself in pure white, went to the White House to give a memorandum that woman should be returned her grace of God, which she deserves, and her acts as a mother, as a woman, as a polarity to the male, and a grace of whom always a nation is born may be recognized. We have done a tragedy. We think raising a child is absolutely no work. It's just nothing. And wearing a hot iron hat and working on a road by a woman like a coolie and earning four dollars an hour is a great job. What use will be your roads if your woman folks will become stone-hearted by those acts and will lose the, that tenderness which they have, what shall be the generation tomorrow? I know some people have argued with me already, we will have test you babies. And I always tell them, go and see that science fiction, The Conqueror of the Apes. Those test you babies will be just like those apes you produce in that fiction, and what they did to you, that will be the end of the man in the hands of those test tube babies. So people have got very weird thoughts. It is no use discussing them now. But I tell you, heaven is that home where there is a divine, inspiring woman sits in her grace and beauty to give a coziness to the man. An angel is that man who works hard and sweats and come back with full of feelings and in that blessed ecstasy he prays the Lord to give him a little land on this earth to enjoy the bliss of life. I'm not a great poet but I have drawn before you a picture of an ideal home and of an ideal couple. And this picture haunts me, guides me, inspires me, and is in me 
and my total activity is based on this picture. And I sincerely feel every man can accomplish this dream. You must remember, three years ago, I came as an individual in this country. Today I have got the strongest family known, recognized, and placed. We are 158,000 people threaded in a one thread of love and we are family. We stand for each other, we love each other, we care for each other and to the extent we sacrifice and go through pain for each other. So much so we have provided such a strong security that on one call we all start functional and one individual finds himself totally with all that energy which no money and dollar can buy in the United States of America. I give you a one example. One of our family members was driving between Denver and Santa Fe on the way somewhere on the road his car couldn't function. Car was very costly, he couldn't leave it. He was alone, he never knew what to do. He stopped a passing by car, gave the number of Los Angeles, said call this number, collect, and tell them about me, this is my difficulty. And gave him the address at what mile he is, and after that he locked his car, inside and sat inside himself because there was no other way waiting perhaps some highway patrol man comes by and he can seek the help or something but that car was first available he sent the message it was 1:30 los angeles time when i got the telephone call and that man called collect he said this is the situation if they want to accept it i said i accept the charges he told me the whole story name and the place. I said, thank you very much. God bless you. You give me your address. We will tell, write a letter of thanks to you. We will take care of it. After that, I sat down on the telephone, called Santa Fe Ashram and also called other three ashrams adjoining that area and told them the situation, asked them to go. Within one hour, there were six people with cars around him. <laughs> Within one hour, there were six people with a car with him, they had their own tow truck, they had a big jeep to do things, they took him the hot yogi tea and a good food. They gave him a comfort, they drove him to Santa Fe, they nursed him for a day, and they got the car done perfect, and next day he was driving to Los Angeles. In his own words, he said, I am proud, I am happy, I am divine, I have sought, I have known the unknown. There are people with great experiences and that is why when we combine in our self and group consciousness and bring a neutral polarity to the psyche of the group consciousness, the universal consciousness of divinity comes out of us like anything. But don't forget the basic unit of the whole structure of this society is home and in home there are two electron and proton and that is male and female. And their understanding and their harmony will clock, create a positive existence through the power of their neutron existence and thus we will have a adjective called molecule. So we are all playing the game of atom in our life and we are all very much together. Sometimes we have something known as frustration. I like to explain to you what is frustration and hatred. You must understand basically what it is. 
frustration is when you have the energy and you do not know where where to give it a outlet energy is there outlet is not there it is a frustration and second frustration is when you do not have the energy and you have a huge outlet you do not know from where to get the energy frustration is that way hatred is nothing but love in misunderstanding love is a communion between the two individual with the understanding and tolerance minus understanding and tolerance the same thing is nothing but hatred that's all so i i i will advise you when somebody hates you don't hate him back because you are doing the same thing what the other guy is doing and there's no end to it actually there is no such thing hatred and hatred comes out of misunderstanding when one become very <coughs> egocentric and selfish if you think the situation selflessly and beyond ego you will understand there may be some background some defects if your car is running on the freeway start giving a nice what you do will you stop it take it to examination and try to repair it same way in your relationship there is sometime a unusual nice but you don't like it and you never have tried to investigate the man was loving me yesterday why is hating me today quite possible he may be frustrated somewhere else and may at least my experience is like this i have seen when any person get frustrated with anybody else i am the easiest target of the hatred and slander and i love it because you cannot match in insanity with anybody your wisdom is at stake so i take the shelter a blanket of wisdom over me and calm myself wait up to time the clouds go away and then i come out say hi how are you fine good luck keep up so exactly with that compassion you have to live in this society otherwise you lose your own energy and you make yourself miserable because you are the one and there are millions of hooks which the people will provide to vibrate because every individual vibrates in relationship with other individual only those individual you will find will be beautiful and neutral who too have already set their magnetic field so that couple male and female who have a set harmony in their own magnetic field will or can give satisfaction happiness happiness is not how many pieces of furniture you have in your house how many houses you own how much interest you pay every year how much tax you pay how many clothes in the wardrobe you have that is not the source of happiness that is required if you have rich you have more clothes you can wear better you look beautiful you look clean it's beautiful so now i think you should just uh, relax for a while and also set up yourself and you must choose your male and female partner without obligation obligation is don't look around who is the beautiful girl i should have her or not everybody is all right and so long you can have a good person to experience this which i want to give you tonight for which i have flown all the way from san jose and i have to fly back because i promise with you i'll complete this course so i have kept my word you keep yours so have few minutes of rest because i have to go back again there are some people sitting there to i am teaching them a special course i'll be again for the next class with you so you know from where i draw this inspiration i saw a political man who's a member of the house he goes to sacramento every day by aircraft so why not if he can do that why not we i can come back so uh,
because now you can relax and meanwhile you can talk around about this and find a partner and then you will all sit together in this sex <coughs> we are going to experiment something on this trust alone and sometimes we go crazy over oh, it doesn't matter he told me not to open eyes let me see it what can happen well you can do that foolishness i should say but that can sometimes affect you very adversely that's why i am warning you in a very clear consciousness that once you sit opposite to your partner set yourself perfectly and then please do not open your eyes and then sit in a most relaxed posture in which you are very comfortable but very much tuned in uh yes you have to be in some line because the flow of energy will just then blow you up the room up here come on here why not bring her along yeah but we can everything cannot be provided come here my love here here, here is this one right near the altar altar you want to have back with this yeah that is fine Okay now please open your eyes and look at your partner just you want to know what his face looks like to you <laughs> Oh those three people are surplus I sympathize with you You can watch what is going on Okay Is okay Push no, no you can't move anything no tape business is 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 beyond taping and business like thing You're going to do something in which no ego is to involve. Just to my. It is working. Then let keep it working. If it doesn't work, this is your problem. But don't put your hand left and right. Concentrate what you are going to do. All set. Smile at each other and wish each other well. <laughs> Now. Now basically close your eyes very firmly and get into a very graceful posture. Now you have to do one thing in this whole vibration of the voice you will tune on on your lady's voice. So ladies first chant three times <coughs> men shall have to tune on on that as to build their polarity sa ta na ma sa ta na ma sa ta na ma sa ta na ma in here Exhale. Now each individual start from here. You chant the mantra, then the next lady will chant next. Then individual to individual, you will concentrate. Come on. Sata nama. Sata nama. Sata nama. Sata. Now that there are two men, you start here.
Now, all the ladies will chant one way and the men will respond, tuning in, in that group consciousness, on that voice which we have heard individually. Simple practice, and any perfection of this, can build in you the unknown powers which man has the right to know it potentially. It can bring you the opening of the lotus of the heart and happiness and joy to the tune of the bliss and infinity. It is fortunate, <coughs> but under normal circumstances you can do it with your life partner provided you take a vow that for any circumstances and environments you will not change your position of the eyes. Once the eyes in this position gets into the eyes of the person, if the psyche, center psyche is not present, it can sometimes give bad results. Therefore, it is essential for us to stand warned, <coughs> not to take any risk, otherwise it's one of the finest exercises. All right, we'll start now. Inhale deep. Sa
that will be gone, there's a feeling of security, of maya, in poverty that will be gone, but the feeling of the bliss in the world is not gone because it is in the beginning and it shall remain till the end. This science, this knowledge, this great mystery unfolded itself to the men of God they shared with every man in brotherhood and in love. And through centuries it is known and unknown 
and again it is known and again it is an unknown. But however, practice of it can lead a man to the state of consciousness that he can realize the sound of infinity in his finite form and his open self can experience the ecstasy of this nature, cosmos, in all dimensions. You might be thinking these days people talk about consciousness and dimensions. One dimension, second, third, fourth. Let us talk about all dimensions. Totality and plurality of the individual is gives you a state of bliss. But the question is, as in this country it is our deep nature is to experience it. And when we we'll hear about it, listen about it, talk about it, but when we cannot experience about it, we get frustrated, and then that frustration comes out one way or the other. If maya, the wealth, is a source of happiness, then all rich people should be happy, poor should be unhappy, but sometimes it's just the reverse. His power and the beauty is happiness in all beautiful people and people in power should be happy, but we find sometimes it is reverse. So actually, it is that experience of contentment, that state of bliss, that fulfillment of the one in its opposite polarity is happiness. We have to find the opposite polarity Without that, we'll run into cycles. Believe in birth of death or not, I don't care. I'm not leading that to you or laying on you, but you short. But that's what it is. That is a cycle. Seeking, seeking, seeking. Not seeking has to seek. One who has sought shall not seek. That's the cycle. So, what I want to ask you is, that is essential for a man to find his own grace, and it can be found out in the polarity of a graceful woman. So to live on life we need two people, a graceful man and a graceful woman, a graceful male and a graceful female. And fortunately, when there will be two graceful people, they will also give birth to another grace, and thus the whole generation of humanity will become nothing but graceful. It is an effort which every man is entitled to do, every man is entitled to experience, and everybody should experience. It is not a far away thing which we cannot know, which we cannot experience. Man is not made to live on this planet in a lonely way. Neither man is made in this earth to live in emotional tantrums. Man is live, <coughs> made to live on this earth in his sophistication, in his delicacy of his higher consciousness. Therefore, please don't get sucked into temporary joys and hallucinations. Try to command your life, gear it in such a way that you may create an environment within yourself to relate to your own potential and infinity so that you can find the blissful divinity and grace in your structural behavior in society. I basically understand, and you all will agree with me, we all are seeking that there is a percentage, some have found it, some are trying to find it, some will find it, some ten percent, twenty percent, hundred percent, goes on and on. But that is the end of the being, and that is the beginning of the being, and the only law which I apply to this is patience, pace. If you are really, really patient, then whole divinity, whole divine will act for you 
and you will always end up in a very satisfactory manner. But when you are insecure and you are very emotional and you are very pushy, you want right now what you want, then you lose right now what you don't want to lose. And this structural behavior patterns, we bring a lot of misery around us, which is not the job of the man. Man is a very wise, given a very special intellectual capacity and powerful creativity. He's supposed to create an atmosphere of heaven around him, and he can. There is no dearth on this earth. In his kingdom, there is everything available. Seeker shall always seek it, he will get it. There are people who get into the mountains in search of stones, but through their knowledge and experience, they pick up those stones. When they break them, there are beautiful crystals in those stones. And they found the vastness of beauty of the nature. Exactly, there's everything on this earth provided we are seekers, we are the true shishya, true Sikhs, who seeks the basic truth of infinity in our finite form. <clears throat> At least you can do one thing as a favor to you, never be ungraceful ever, ever in relationship to, to any woman. Because remember, if you do not respect a symbol, you do not respect the totality. And woman is symbol of regeneration. We call it a symbol of Adi Shakti. It is very difficult for me to talk to you because I understand the deep pain you have suffered in the hand of woman. Some say, well, my mom is no good. Some say, my this is not that. I'm not asking you what is what. That is a particular one case. Your girlfriend betrayed you, and you must have betrayed some. There's no big deal. It happens. But as a symbolic, if you start relating to it with respect and grace, you know how much grace will come in your life, you can't even believe it. Doesn't matter. Sometimes you have a partner who's sick, who's very nagging, who's very neurotic, very insecure. That might be test of your own grace. You can't get out of it. But basically, symbolically, as a virtue, you should always try to be neutral and respectful whenever you have to deal with any woman. When a man reaches a perfect structural behavior that he is graceful to every woman, doesn't matter what are the circumstances, what are the opportunity, that man lives all his life in plenty, bounty and happiness. So I hope uh, if you cannot do lot of about it, little about it, is this is the minimum requirement. <coughs> it is payment of the karma of anyone who is born out of woman that symbolically he should have a reverence, a respect to every woman on this planet. Now you may not agree with me, and I don't want to make you to agree with me, but I can tell you where it will lead to. If symbolically you will not have a lot of respect in your intellectual thoughts, then you cannot relate to your daughter, your wife, your mother, and your other surrounding lady relatives, and you will end up frustrated. In other words, scientifically speaking, you cannot relate to your own polarity, and thus it will bring you a lot of frustration. I know sometimes even we do not want to hear about it. I agree with you. Sometimes there is a lion, it is hungry, it is going to attack, you don't want to talk about it. But wise men do discuss it, to understand it, to prepare for it, and then face it. 
therefore in your own life it is your birthright to have happiness and also it is your birthright to know you are unknown and to start on that path you have to build in you the characteristic to be always graceful dealing with your own polarity that is the double you o man that why i was talking about now let us break this order of pattern and sit down otherwise as we are sitting in the beginning that will give us a time to stretch a little bit now this is a sound which we are going to practice the very very ancient forgotten sound which we all can do and is a light not a fun in it but you will mess it many times doesn't matter but it's all right sound is hum ram yum yum <laughs> you can laugh about it but it's a very powerful sound when you chant it you will know what it does to you hum ram yum yum <laughs> when you chant it you will know what you mostly you will go in correct on it all right huh? hum ram yum yum hum means we ram means the omni present yam means the god of death it is another name of uh, lord shiva in sanskrit these sounds are known as correlative correct creative sounds well sounds are sound why to discuss them right all right first ladies will chant the sound total and then men will hold it okay. sit down nicely as very good yogi you are quite pretty senior yogi there's no problem all yogi has to do is put his spine straight that's all that's the moment if you can keep your spine straight you have got what you need i always say americans are great yogis because they are very one pointed all you have to do is to turn their negativity into the positive nature and only the danger lies sometimes they reach the stage of insanity and then they come to eat you up because you must understand snake has a capacity it bites its own protector but that danger if you are willing to face can possibly you should this the best possible bunch of people who are really very honest and great seekers i do not know what the world opinion is but in 3 years what i have found is it's a very one pointed nation you can turn it a little bit from a negative activity to positive they are so creative and uh, the main problem where the teachers or the guides mess up is they require constant attention they are not going to rest whether they seek it through machines they create their own god with a machine doesn't matter but they are going to do it i tell you that because they are very one pointed people they are not lazy just give a thought to an american he's write a whole book on it <laughs> and give a thought to an indian he will meditate all his life <laughs> i i'm telling you give a thought to a middle east man he will talk about it but will never act 
give a thought to a Japanese, he will not speak, but he will just produce the product. So don't misunderstand, things are not geography-wise too. Geography has its own effect. Most of people have never traveled around the world, they have not met around the world what people are, they have never studied that whole thing, and that's why the lack of understanding is. But I think environments have got great effect on people, and people affect the environments also very greatly. So, however, let us do what we are going to do. All right. Ladies, you will chant first, the first basic sound. Om Ram Yam Yam. That's all it is, okay? Come on, inhale. Start. Om Ram Yam Yam. Om Ram Yam Yam. No, no, the men have, you have to chant one time, and then the men have to chant it too. All right, now, again. Inhale, inhale, start. Hum, rum, yum, yum. 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 Hum Ram Yam Yam. Hum Ram Yam Yam. Hum Ram Yam Yam. Inhale, exhale. If you ever done a kissing, knowingly and unknowingly, you water, watch out in this exercise and in this word vibration how your lips act. It's a very powerful situation to study. And I do not know whether you have ever experienced the art of kissing. Art of kissing is a very, very frustrating and sometimes it is very delightful because the lips have the most powerful membrane and nervous system. Next to tongue and to eyes, this is very near to the brain. Therefore, I like to remind you to keep in your subconscious mind the study of this mantra which has Mantras are built that way, to do certain things into the body and in consciousness. That's what they are meant for. Okay? Ladies, inhale. Start. Ham Ram Yam Yam. 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 Ram Ram Yam Yam. Ham 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 Ram Yam Yam. Exhale. Now you are going to mess it up because the sensitivity through the lips takes you through exhale. And it's very difficult to keep that rhythm, I know it. We have tried it many times. But I tell you, when you do it for a long time, you start feeling a sensitivity in that area and something happens to this control system here in the skull. 
and worthwhile when you have some time off time and you can go out you know then sometimes you get frustrated run away to the hills that's a, that is a american tantrum run to the top of the hill or to the ocean they think there is a peace there you know what is that's the same habit run for your life where word is round if you run from one point and you keep on running you'll end up the same point back but we think perhaps changing changing of time and place can give us something better to effect always remember there is a one thing very beautiful said in the scriptures change the place and the time to run for seeking the wise man so that the doubt in life and the frustration which has come in the communion can be wiped out and oh man you will not carry the poison in your subconscious mind mind as a block that's why people seek the wisdom to experience the knowledge you should never be shy never be afraid when you have any area which is creating a block in your consciousness you should immediately discuss it with any man of wisdom who you can trust and believe and you can communicate so that you may live on this earth as a man of a great clear consciousness it's very essential is the highest reward in a human life if one can enjoy it not a little thing remember this thing it is just known as a definite infinite source of consultation we get some time a question can come suppose you don't have a man what you will do then find something through which you can relate to world of infinity of god consciousness even if that is not possible there's another possibility your own consciousness should develop to the power of infinity all you have to do is just close yourself and the answer right comes man has everything in him you may not believe me but i can tell you out of just extreme simplicity man has everything you know sometimes you might be curious about it why men of god are slandered and abused in public and people misbehave with them and mistreat them it's just like that when you light a candle moth will come to see that they can extinguish it so it is just a polarity where there is a light there is a shade of polarity whenever you are very righteous and doing the right job you will always end up on a cross or in a gas chamber it is not something which is unknown on man and his life but you must have a dignity and you must have a realization of your potential up to infinity that what one cannot even imagine to hear and think and see the other one can show it prove it and do it may the long time sun shine upon you all consciousness and create it. it's a very peaceful prayer for every human being on this earth that's why we adapted it 
and all over in the United States of America twice a day. Anyone who belongs to a thought to be holy, healthy, happy, he thinks this. Is there something more beautiful than this? We all do it. Can you believe it? What we are doing? We are trying to know it. Twice a day, for the total humanity, we give them a prayer of the saints. Who we are then? May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. Guide Destiny in every dignity, O dignity in every being, O grace of Thou, grace of infinity, O beauty in every beauty, joy in every joy, bliss in every bliss, creative of all creation and of all consciousness, O supreme consciousness, Lord of Lord, the one God of all gods. It was a blissful moment we in brotherhood could sit understand, relate, and meditate on Thy infinity. Give us joy, happiness, and bliss. Make us one with everyone to find the one within and without, and we may live in love, in peace, in state of consciousness of bliss and joy. Satnam. Satnam. Thank you very much. It was a pretty happy evening. Hopefully every evening comes to us that way. And we will always enhance our personality to the goal of our own human satisfaction.